Hello everyone, my name is Mathis Michenio. I'm a Katia consultant working for PLM Technology in Norway. Today I'm going to perform a live demonstration of the 3D Experience Release 19X on cloud, and I will show you how we can remove fillet. The reason we want to remove fillet is for simplifying a shape or volume that will be used for meshing later on. So this video is dedicated more for people working with simulation, such as FM analysts, but also designers that are working together with them. And today I will show you three different methods for removing fillet on three different types of fillet. Here's the first one. It's a mechanical fillet, meaning that it's a fillet tangent to both surfaces here. And an uh, easy way to remove this fillet is to use the feature Remove Face Edge that will automatically remove the fillet and trim the two surfaces together. So, uh, so this fillet has been done in Katia, uh, but it can be also coming from different software. And I will show you what it looks like. So you select the tree or you select the fillet along the direction. Okay, it becomes pink. And you click on OK, and automatically it will trim the surfaces and it will give you a nice sharp edge. That's what, in this case, you want, for example, for doing a mesh. Actually, you can also find this uh, feature in part design when you have a solid. So it will work in that case. However, I do recommend to work with surface because you have a lot more uh, tool uh, to to make uh, an edge sharp. So let's move on the second uh, type of fillet. Uh, this one is not a mechanical fillet. I did it on purpose here to show you that it is uh, completely different. As you can see, it's actually a blend. Uh, so I use some tension here in to make a very uh, strange type of uh, fillet or like a connection. And here I'm going to show you that, well, in that case, removing uh, this will work. So you select the surface here. Okay. So in that case, it works and gives you also a sharp edge. But let's say that in some case, when you have complex shape like that, it does not work. So what can we do for the, for removing this? Uh, so the second method is to use some uh, tool in generative shape design where we can just uh, trim manually the two uh, surfaces. So as you can see here, uh, we have one surface containing several patches. So the first thing I will do is to select the feature disassemble. Uh, and here it's up to you. You can always create another geometrical set if you want to work on this one. So I will select this assemble here. It will divide this surface in 10 cells, 10 patches. Okay, I will even hide the first one. And here you can just delete the fillet. Okay, so now we have, as you can see, four surfaces. We need to join this tree here. Okay, so now we are working only with two surfaces, this one and this one. And I will select the feature uh, boundary here. Okay, except that they will select tangent continuity because you don't want this edge neither. So you just want this one. Okay, and this one as well. Uh, so you can see it's divided, but here tangent continuity. Uh, makes it pretty nice. Okay, so here we have two boundary, two boundaries, sorry. And I will just extrapolate this surface here. And for doing that, you select in transform the feature extrapolate. You select the boundary here, okay. And the surface, so it automatically detects it. Great, I will put 30 millimeter just to be sure that we are pretty long we are going through okay and i will do the same here in that case as you can see it goes pretty far 
And now we'll just select the feature trim. Selecting these two extrapolates, click on OK. And here you have your results. So I'm just hiding the boundary to show you. It works as well. Uh, it takes a bit more time, but it often works uh, this method, uh, basically by working manually with the surface. And the last case is a bit more complex, uh, since in this case, it's uh, a shape uh, actually containing a fillet here, but does not have any patch. Okay, so this can be coming from different software that uh, works with NURBS and do not separate the, um, the patches together. So these cases are a bit more complex to work with. And uh, in that scenario, well, I would say there is two methods. Uh, the first one would be just to, to select, for example, a parallel, parallel curve. Okay, uh, selecting this surface. And here, here in like this, in that case, I don't think it actually work at all. Let's see if I want to. Yes, here in that case, it works. So, well, one method could be to just create the parallel curve. Okay, around, a, yeah, a bit further, I think. Yes, in that case here, and do another one. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's actually working pretty well. So in that case, you could just uh, create these two parallel curves, uh, make sure uh, to, to go all over it here. And while doing the same method, meaning that you have to uh, split this area and do extrapolate in both direction and make sure that you have a sharp edge. However, in that uh, video, I will show you another method so the last method would be to use a reverse engineering tool and for doing that we have to switch to an application called digitize shaped to surface okay uh, again here if you want you can just create another geometrical set if you prefer to work on this one and we will start by creating a tessellation Sorry, so you have to go to digitized shape preparation. Here it is. And we are going to transform this. And sorry, it was the last one. Digitize shape to uh, sculpting. Here it is. Uh, you, you will tessellate this surface. Uh, if you don't know that you can find this tessellation here in digital shape to uh, sculpting, Another application that everyone has normally is 3D printing. You will also find tessellation feature in that tool here. So in that case, I'm using this tessellation. Uh, I'm going to tessellate the surface here. Let's try to have something pretty accurate. I would put it to the very minimal, but the, or maybe this one is a bit too small. Let's see here. I'm going to hide my surface and I, you can easily show the number of triangle by going to properties, display mode and triangle. Well, there is a triangle, a lot of triangle here, but I think it can work for our advantage. Okay, so we continue working on that tessellate. Uh, what am, am I going to do? I'm going to switch to the digital shape to to surface application here and we can start by selecting the free edges of that of that uh, tessellation okay uh, apply so you want distinct here uh, we have it's it's not easy to see it on the screen but you have a very uh, light blue color around the edge here and you can select the option curve from scan you select the free edge uh, here you can decide which tolerance you want so yeah 0.1 sounds actually pretty good uh, you can click on apply 
uh, you want of course to have something smooth and see the results so what do we have here we have one curve here one curve there so as you can see this one has been uh, split so what we can do would be to join these two lines so i'll go back to genetic shape design i select a join between these two elements here and i will finalize that by doing just a curve smooth to be sure that we have you see a curvature continuity click on ok and here it is okay so now we have the edges we go back to digitype shape to surface now i will do a curvature mapping i want to see here ah you need to switch to uh, the correct visualization mode shading with material okay and here this is not exactly what i want i want to see this fillet here so you can just modify the value or doing maximum switching different mode here it is here we can see pretty well uh, we can see that there is a mechanical fillet but it has been uh, the there is no patch so we will make it manually okay you can keep that and we can work uh, on this tessellation i will go back to wireframe here and you select the function curves network preparation okay you have this small tool here that appears and you can select the tessellation uh, this is the support mesh okay and here we have a nice tool fillet curve and constant fillet yeah actually we can just work with the constant fillet and you click on points like that on your fillet until it follows well the curve here or you can you can even modify this if you are not happy. Uh, for me, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I think you can modify. Oops, here I made another one. So I think you can modify it by edit curve. Yeah. Hmm. Edit curve. Yeah, here you can modify a bit. Well, I will not modify it too much because uh, this is not the point of the video here, but I click on OK. We don't need to have this uh, green uh, visualization. We can go back to the previous one, as you can see here. And we will just continue working on this tessellate, but this time using the manual uh, curve. And I will just finish here. So you want to be sure that you are making something correct. I will just see, you can just draw directly on the mesh. same here same here and i will also as you can see here we have the beginning of the fillet here i will make one there too oh, this one didn't work hmm. yeah here it is so you have to twist a bit in order to get the the correct one here it is too. Uh, we can also make one there as well. Nice. Mm. You see this one is not perfect because it's going back. So I will just click on Control Z and do it again. Uh, same here. So if you are not sure just do it a bit next to it okay nice and i will also make one here the same here problem and if you have this issue it's mainly because we have uh made too many triangles in the tessellation so you can also reduce that same as well here i will continue until you get a nice result yeah 
Hmm. I think this one looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now we have enough uh, patches. We can see them. Huh? As you can see, well, this one maybe is not that good. We can move it manually like that. Okay. And same for this one, I feel. Yeah. Okay. So we have made the patch. Great. Uh, as you can see, new spectre, you start, you start to have a lot of line. So we don't want the medium line. Okay. And we can select the curve network. So here you will select manually all the curves you want. Okay, so we'll just uh, do selection like this. You want the curve smooth as well. All the different curves you made. Okay, great. And the support is the tessellate. Okay, apply. So now you can see everything is join. Click on OK. You want to close this network. So we have curve network here. And now we switch to surface reconstruction where we have to click on surface network here. And you select the curve network. You select your cloud or tessellation here. And you select, if you want to, the initial surface. And here we select uh, this one, the surface one, the tolerance can put something a bit more smaller normally you have to keep it like it is uh, and you click on apply and it will build manually all the patches together you might have to do some work afterwards we will see if it's working well click on ok so what do we have here uh, we have the surface here i will create another geometrical set just to show you we will go back now to Generative shape design, and we will do a disassemble on this. So we have 12 cells. Okay. So I can hide this now. We can hide this too. Okay. I switch back to view. Okay. As we can see, one, two, three. Mm hmm. Ha, ah, here it is. Often you have one surface that is added to the selection and this one it's overlapping with the other. So you just do a uh, delete on this one or, or hide. Okay, and here it's a lot better. And well, from now it's more or less the same case. Uh, you have to uh, remove this patch is here and manually do uh, a join of these three patches here, three patches here and do an extrapolate of both these surfaces to get a sharp edge. So that was the video for today. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Uh, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I hope to see you soon uh, for uh, watching more and more videos of uh, Catch Up to the Experience. Thank you very much. Goodbye.